when I heard the first explosion and had been so loud that the building had vibrated that I said, what the hell was that? And someone said, oh, it must be a car accident. And I said, no, is there something definitely wrong? And ran outside only to see a few hundred of our kids ready to walk into the building looking up in despair and I did not know what was happening until I looked up and just stood there with my mouth wide open and was stuck in my tracks for about two minutes and then I realized we have to get out of here. The next thing I knew, Dr. Burke, as he calls it, he went into boss mode and um, he just started doing things like making phone calls and he just seemed to be taking charge which he was I felt very safe in the building I felt you know through the first two planes we were in a shelter drill and I just felt very safe in the building with all this leadership going on and um you always wonder where where does it really happen how do you really know you're a leader and people really listen I was in my lobby there were about a hundred people that showed up from the street from nowhere they came running into the building crying screaming out of hysteria and my job was to calm them down and I had a lot of things in my mind if you heard the story my sister also perished in that uh, she was on the 105th floor of that first tower that was hit but there was no time to think about anything else other than the kids and all of a sudden all these other people who also showed up into my lobby so we evacuated the building yes we were told by the police department they were leaving the headquarters got headquarters got the uh, order to leave <laughs> well what were we chopped liver you know to stay in the building no we were going to leave and that's what we did too we left now I could have as the principal said I'm sorry I have to think about this we didn't think about it we were all busy reacting on the first floor it was instantaneous we evacuated the whole school Tom had his contingent on the Brooklyn Bridge we had others on the Williamsburg Bridge we had others just north but then we had 30 plus physically challenged kids and I bet you're wondering how did they get home well, they got home, amazingly, they all got home. And I remember on my way home, walking across the bridge to Brooklyn Heights, that hearing, and I still hear it in the back of my mind, the rumbling of the first tower falling and not knowing what was happening, except that I thought we were getting attacked and I thought it was a movie. Is this happening? What's going on? But I saw it fall and it was obviously devastating. And I got news for you, because of those fire drills, God, did I hate those fire drills. But because of those fire drills and the indoor drills and the whatever other drills we had to do, every teacher knew what to do. Every person knew where to go. Every person, even though we were moving into a different direction, everyone knew. Uh, unfortunately, um, from where we are atop of a hill, half of our building oversees the uh, Twin Towers. And when this occurred, um, we knew something was going on. There was sort of a rumble in the, in the hallways. And some of the kids were, you know, hysterical and crying. And they knew something was going on. Our principal, Ed Cito, immediately uh, called for an emergency cabinet meeting. All of a sudden, in the middle of this, we started to get uh, trickles of students from the two academies. Uh, and he reconvened in his office to tell us that we had students that were coming over from Manhattan. You know, let's make a decision. How are we going to do this? Who's going to be in charge of what? And we've got a tough school. We have right now 150 severely emotionally disturbed children. About three of them live in the community. The rest of them live very far away. So we're sitting here listening to you all tell the stories about leaving and getting out. And we have to tell the story about staying and not being able to go anywhere and not being able to contact anyone. We had to calm the mother who walked six hours to come and find her child who was the only child who was put on a bus to go home. And then we had to find a way to get the mother home. When we had parents who said to us on the phone, when we finally had, were able to make some phone contact, send my five-year-old autistic child to a shelter, it's okay, I'm not coming. 
that we managed to get all those children home safely. We had no children in shelters, no children left unattended, and all of our children were safe and were able to come back to us. Uh, we saw that we were going to be here uh, into the evening. So we started to say, what if these students, three to four hundred students, needed to stay overnight? Where are we going to house them? Uh, where are we getting blankets and pillows? Um, do we have any available cots? And, what, and we decided to call the armory. We had about 45 teachers volunteer to stay after school uh, and into the evening. Uh, I think we had uh, six or seven assistant principals as well as uh, Ed Cito himself, and we decided to work in shifts. Well, I was the brand new principal of a District 75 special ed school, kindergarten to fifth grade. What I emailed my superintendent at nine o'clock at night was, Susan, we have 20 students left. The buses can't get through because we're on Houston Street, and their medication has worn off. Please advise. In my call to my current superintendent, I said, you know, I looked in that, new, in that new principal book you gave me, and there's nothing about how to do this. There's no chapter about this. And um, Mr. Rosari kind of said, you know, I think we're writing it now. I, I would just like to add, uh, I've had a number of students uh, come up to me and, and tell me how, uh, how good it was that we seemed to be calm and that we, uh, it, it really helped them. Um, this is Caroline. It's my assistant principal. And she had two children in the school. And she spent a lot of time that day trying to figure out whether she was the mother of all the kids or just the mother of those two kids. Stuyvesant, as you all are aware, very large school. We had to move almost 3,100 students from a 10-story building. But I couldn't do this alone. It's easy for me to say, we're leaving. But it really has to be put into motion. They did, they did what each of us expects them to do, I understand but they did it without worrying about themselves, about worrying what the consequences would be. Some of them have their own children. In fact, Olga has a child who's over 234, but she did her job as all of us did, taking care of the children that are in our charge to make sure that each of them got home. 